On decks with exposed fasteners, getting the screws in line really makes a difference in how professional the end result looks. Just as important is the space between the deck boards. If these lines are not consistent, they will call attention to themselves, and not in a good way. Straight lines of stainless steel screws begins on this job with a multi-purpose jig. It establishes equal distance between screws, and it also establishes consistent spacing for scarf joints. A chunk of LVL is cut the same width as the deck board, and about 8 inches long. A fence allows it to ride along the joist edge. On another section of deck, the framing is different, and these auxiliary legs from the side are screwed into the front to butt to the side of floor joists. The outermost deck board sets the pattern and layout for this three-sided deck, so Ben establishes the screw placement every 16 inches on center over the sleepers. Along the side section of the deck, these fold-down tabs ride along the edge of the eye joist, placing the fasteners in the center. The second set of nail holes is for sections with double joists. Because there was slight variability in spacing and material thicknesses, the holes are marked in a two-step process. So those are Ben's Little Red Spacers. He gets them at fast cap. They're stackable, magnetic, and nifty. These red ones give a 3 8 inch thick gap between the boards. You may have noticed this decking is 2 by 6. That's because of the wide spacing of the cantilevered joists. Around the corner, they're framed over a concrete roof and the framing is tighter, so the decking is 5 quarter by 6. The two types of decking vary in width also, so Ben enlarged the gaps to 7 16 over here. This way, the boards and the gaps are centered. At first, they tried cutting countersinks for the screws, but they got less tear out in the western red cedar by just driving screws straight into the lumber. So that's what they did. These are homemade shims, but he was also able to find some solar-powered shims on Amazon. Regardless of what kind of shim you use, stick it in the gap, push the deck board against it, and drive the screw home. If the board needs more than just the encouragement of your ankle, use a clamp. If you don't have a long enough clamp, break out the old beater wedge. 